And we're live. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this afternoon's what we're calling Lunch and Learn Town Hall on the county's FY22 budget. Uh, this is our first town hall of this year, and uh, we generally plan to hold town halls each month on topics affecting the community. Uh, my name is Julie Briskman. I am the Algonquin District Supervisor, and I'm excited to be here today for our first town hall. Uh, last year, we hosted town halls on county's park and rec program, road improvements, Cascades Marketplace, and actually two uh, town halls we hosted on COVID-19. One was in English and one was in Spanish. And uh, we're always looking for um, ways to bring you information and we welcome town hall suggestions. Uh, you can always message, message us on Facebook or email my office. Um, so we're in the beginning uh, stages of our budget process. Um, and that's a subject that impacts all of us. Uh, the county budget determines what projects um, will be in the capital improvements program and which ones will get funded uh, and when and how the money is allocated to each department. And most uh, intimately, it also determines your tax rate um, for the coming year for real and personal property taxes. Uh, the budget comes in two volumes um, and they look like this. This is volume one. <laughs> this is the operating budget. And uh, we also have volume two, which is our capital improvements program. And both of them are available um, online at loudon.gov forward slash budget. So I encourage you to read through them if you uh, feel so inclined. Um, I find them rather interesting and we are uh, on the regular getting awards for how our budgets are prepared uh, in the county. So they actually are easy reads, believe it or not. Um, it's meticulous, it's detailed, it provides analysis and forecasts and line by line details of uh, pretty much every dollar in revenue and expense categories. Um, it's a clear and concise picture of, of why Loudoun County um, has a certification program uh, in performance management from ICMA and a AAA bond rating. Um, I'd like to thank our chief financial officer, elect Alex Espinoza uh, for joining us and Caleb White's assistant director of finance and budget for participating today. We're going to be here for about an hour um, and uh, we're going to jump right into the discussion with a presentation by Caleb and uh, we have some questions that came in, but you can always um, message us on Facebook to ask questions as well. So, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. White's for his presentation. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you, Supervisor Bristman, and I'm very appreciative of your invitation to join today. And uh, I think this is my first time on Facebook Live, so uh, <laughs> excited about that milestone as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my presentation here. I'm going to try and keep, keep this part uh, fairly short so we can get to the questions, but this will focus uh, both on the annual budget process, as well as uh, specifically the proposed fiscal year 22 budget, which the board uh, will start uh, deliberating on on Monday evening. So, just as a little bit of background, uh, the county government uh, has a fairly large budget um, for fiscal year 22 uh, proposed appropriations uh, total approximately 3.3 billion dollars. Uh, the county government does have a um, large workforce as well, uh, over 4,000 full-time positions. And important to citizens, uh, county services that are funded by the budget are a lot of services that, that citizens rely on on a day-to-day -day basis, local public safety services, um, transportation services, parks, recreation, culture, libraries, um, key social safety net and human services programs, uh, as well as uh, local schools. Uh, so here you can see um, really the major categories of the county's budget. Uh, so the county's uh, operating budget, which totals uh, over $2 billion, uh, is, is really the day-to-day -day expenditures of the county government. So. Uh, salaries for uh, firefighters, for example, um, funds to uh, operate uh, the libraries. Uh, in addition to that, the county has a capital budget, which is a six-year planning budget to uh, construct uh, 
capital facilities such as uh, roads, new schools, and other public facilities. And then finally, the Loudoun County Public Schools budget, which um, the Board of Supervisors also appropriates. Uh, so just talking a little bit about the budget process, um, a budget is a spending plan for the upcoming year. So the county's fiscal year runs uh, July 1st to June 30th of any year. So currently, while we're in calendar year 2021 at this time, we're also in the second half of fiscal year 2021, then fiscal year 2022 will start in July. Um, in looking at the budget process, the Board of Supervisors reviews the services that they provide to the community, also looks at what needs are available in the community, and then kind of at a high level, there's a match between uh, what revenues the county anticipates to receive over the next year and at what levels, and then what expenditures are needed uh, to provide the services that the board uh, determines are appropriate for the community. Um, just a, a, a quick policy note, uh, the county's budget must be balanced. Unlike the federal government, uh, state law does require that the county's budget is balanced. So revenues do need to match expenditures. Uh, deficits are not allowable. And as I mentioned earlier, the Board of Supervisors appropriates both for county government operations, capital projects, as well as school operations and capital projects. Uh, the next few slides are an uh, overview of the annual budget process. Uh, I bring this up to, to highlight that for both county staff and the Board of Supervisors, the budget is really an ongoing process at any time. So uh, budget development for fiscal year 22 actually started in July of 2021. At that time, uh, the county staff began putting together initial revenue projections uh, for the fiscal year that at that point was almost a year away from starting. And uh, we start work with the board's finance, government operations, and economic development committee, which is what FGOEDC stands for, uh, to, to begin initial discussions on the revenue outlook for the budget. Uh, moving into the fall process, uh, staff goes to the finance committee and has a number of discussions uh, with the board about uh, various uh, programs or services that, that the board uh, may be interested in starting or expanding during the budget, as well as unique revenue issues and, and other topics. Internally at this time, uh, county departments are reviewing their own programs and services and making requests to the budget process for, um, for appropriate staffing levels and, and other resources. Uh, as we move uh, towards the holiday timeline at the end of the calendar year, the Thanksgiving um, and, and beyond, uh, the county staff uh, finishes its work on um, recommendations um, at the staff level of, of new uh, expenditures in the budget. Uh, at that time in January, we also have a final uh, check-in with the Board of Supervisors uh, to receive final direction from the board on um, what what uh, level of service and what level of uh, tax burden generally they would like to see in the upcoming budget proposal. Uh, then in February, which is the month we're currently in, the county administrator presents his budget to the board. That has already occurred for this year. That occurred on February 10th. Um, and then Actually, this week, public hearings are occurring uh, on the budget proposal. Two occurred on Tuesday, and uh, one will be occurring tomorrow, and there will be information at the end of this presentation on how you can sign up uh, for that public uh, input session. Um, in April, the board will uh, adopt the budget this year that's scheduled for April 6th, and then um, the county staff gets back to work and we prepare an adopted budget document based on, on the actual expenditures the board adopted and the fiscal year begins in July. Uh, so this slide here shows uh, factors that are specifically impacting the 22 budget. Uh, some of these factors such as population changes, uh, new students for the uh, schools, priorities of the board, needs of the community are, are really factors that are um, considered every year as part of the budget. Certainly this year, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the resulting economic challenges, 
uh, those unique factors are are um, impacting the budget as well, both both on the revenue side as well as um, in uh, particular expenditures. As COVID has really highlighted a lot of areas of uh, need in the county's operations. And just to talk a little bit more about COVID-19, because I know this is a, a very uh, timely topic, uh, the county uh, is in good shape financially, uh, despite some of the challenges being caused by the pandemic. Uh, when the board adopted the fiscal year 2021 budget in April of 2021, which was really right when the pandemic was getting started, uh, the board had a strategy to deal with what at that time was really an unknown economic situation of freezing $100 million in new expenditures. Uh, since that time, as the economic situation has become clearer and not, not as um, drastic as had been initially feared, uh, the board has unfrozen half of that amount. But we do currently maintain $50 million in frozen expenditures in fiscal year 21. Uh, and that's good because we are currently projecting about a $20 million decline in revenues versus the adopted budget due to the um, impacts of COVID-19. However, because of savings that have really been already produced by those reserve expenditures, which, which were mainly positions that were, will have been delayed in being hired, uh, the budget is forecast to end fiscal year 21 in a positive manner. And then uh, for fiscal year 22, we are seeing revenue impacts from COVID-19 in um, a number of sources, including real property tax, which we'll be discussing a little bit later. But the, the big headline is that uh, strong continued growth in the data center industry and um, resulting revenue, new revenue from that industry is offsetting a lot of the COVID-19 impacts and providing significant new revenue for the, the fiscal year 22 budget. Uh, here on this slide, you can see the uh, main sources of revenue uh, for the county's general fund. Uh, real property taxes are the largest source of uh, revenue for the county that is um, uh, typical for basically every other local government in Virginia. Uh, the next largest piece of our revenue is personal property taxes. And I will note personal property taxes is the fastest growing portion of our revenue. Uh, attributable to personal prop property taxes on the computer equipment housed within data centers. And that, that is the most significant source of revenue growth that the county is going to see for fiscal year 22. Uh, here you can see uh, in the county administrator's proposed budget what the, the priorities were. So um, uh, the county administrator has prioritized um, Compensation increases for county employees, especially considering um, the, the very significant uh, impacts of COVID-19 on county workloads over the past year. Uh, we, we've had staff in the health department and in public safety um, departments, um, human services departments that have, have really um, stepped up to serve the community through this tough time. And that is very important to the county administrator to be able to recognize that effort through compensation. Uh, additionally, uh, staffing to open uh, new capital facilities, uh, support to the capital improvement process. And then as uh, this budget process marks um, the current Board of Supervisors first full year in office, uh, supporting the board's strategic initiatives and priorities was another large area. Following that, um, I, I talked a little bit earlier about how each department submits their um, uh, new resource requests, which we refer to as resource requests in kind of budget speak here. Um, they submit those resource requests in a prioritized way through the budget process, and um, those will be considered by the Board of Supervisors as well uh, during the upcoming process. Uh, on this slide here, this is an overview of the proposed increases uh, specific to the county side of the budget, not including schools. Uh, so we do have some what we call base budget increases. Those are, are increases in um, uh, health care benefits, uh, contractual services, things like that, 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 need to, that need to be funded unless um, if, they, if that funding was not there, service levels could be uh, impacted to the community. Uh, following that is employee compensation. And then um, moving into new positions, uh, we have 60 positions in the budget. 
uh, to open new facilities. The two most significant facilities that are being uh, planned for opening in fiscal year 22 are Howell and Bernie Hanson Park uh, down uh, west of Dallas Airport off Evergreen Mills Road. That is going to be a new large uh, regional park. And then um, uh, security staffing for um, the, the expanded courthouse that will be opening in Leesburg. Um, following that, we have a number of positions to support the board's strategic initiatives. Uh, we do have uh, 12 new positions that we're just requiring position authority for the county every year looks to see if there's ways to reallocate existing funds to address some of our needs uh, versus having to add new funding. So there's 12 positions being added through reallocation of existing funds. And then um, 52 additional positions are associated with uh, department priorities that have been identified through the budget process. Uh, talking a little bit about the Loudoun County Public Schools, um, this year the, uh, the proposed budget uh, includes a substantial increase for the Loudoun County Public Schools. Uh, so last, I talked a little bit earlier about the expenditure reserve that the board established um, for COVID-19 revenue loss. 60 million of that 100 million uh, was, uh, was a, a frozen transfer to the Loudoun County Public Schools. Uh, so this proposed budget both restores that frozen transfer as well as adds an additional $97 million of new local tax funding. Uh, to the schools, that will bring the um, uh, local tax funding transferred to the schools to about um, a, a little over $1 billion. Uh, and in the chart below, you can see the uh, enrollment forecasts for FY for fiscal year 22. Obviously, the schools um, dealing with the COVID situation had a, a decline in actual enrollment uh, in this current academic year versus what they had initially planned for. Uh, this this graphic here, we, we call this the dollar graphic. Uh, this shows you where, as a resident of the county, uh, your local tax dollars uh, go. So for every dollar you pay in taxes, the um, majority of it, 55 cents, goes towards supporting school operations. So the, the public schools are the largest operating line item in our budget. And then beyond that, you can see debt service, uh, so that would be um, uh, payments on uh, the county's um, bonds and other financing sources for capital facilities that have already been constructed. Uh, public safety uh, is about nine cents. And then um, the capital improvement program is about 10 cents beyond that. So you can really see that once you get past schools, debt, and public safety, the uh, the remainder of the budget is not uh, is not that large in comparison to the others. Uh, so to talk a little bit about real property tax, the real property tax rate, the county administrator's budget um, contains three options for the board to consider uh, for real property tax rates, and certainly the board could consider other options beyond this, but part of the board's direction in preparing the budget was to have three specific scenarios for them to consider. So the proposed budget is presented at a real property tax rate of a dollar and a half, 1.005, as you can see here on the screen. Um, this, this rate is three cents below the current uh, tax rate of a dollar three and a half. Additionally, there is an option for the board to consider that would reduce the tax rate by one penny, and then an option that would increase the tax rate by a half a penny, and that increase option would allow the board to consider a few additional um, county department resource requests that were not included in the proposed budget. The, the 101 tax rate is the maximum tax rate uh, for the board to consider as part of this year's budget process. We refer to that as the advertised tax rate. And then the dollar tax rate is what we refer to as the equalized tax rate. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that on the next slide. Uh, so the equalized tax rate is the tax rate at which um, overall the real property portfolio that was in place the same time a year ago would generate the same amount of revenue um, as compared, so compared um, uh, fiscal year 
22 to fiscal year 21. Um, the overall equalized rate this year is a dollar. However, uh, we are seeing a dynamic here because of COVID-19 that, that is pretty unusual. Uh, so the homeowner's equalized tax rate is 97 and a half cents, and that is because home values have significantly uh, appreciated um, in a lot of uh, areas of the county over the past year. The commercial equalized rate is a dollar eight and a half. Uh, this is because within commercial classes of property, there have been some classes of property that have experienced significant uh, declines because of the pandemic. For example, um, hospitality or hotel properties have experienced an almost 60% decline in value uh, because folks aren't staying in hotels or traveling during the pandemic and, and traffic is significantly down at Dallas Airport. Uh, so you can see in a normal year, the homeowner's equalized rate and the commercial equalized rate are generally within a few percentage points of each other, but this year there's a large spread because of that, that unique COVID dynamic. Uh, this slide just quickly summarizes um, at a high level, what is in the six-year capital improvement program? Uh, so you can see that transportation and schools are the largest uh, expenditure items in the capital improvement program. And once again, this is a six-year budget uh, for really what are large one-time expenditures for public facilities, roads, and, and other um, significant projects. Uh, just a quick note about uh, tomorrow's public hearing. So the board is holding their final uh, hearing on the proposed 22 budget at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Loudoun County Government Center. Uh, remote participation is available and encouraged. Uh, so if you are interested in doing that, uh, you can call the number here on the screen uh, to, to sign up for that um, session tomorrow. Uh, the, following that, the board has scheduled a series of budget work sessions during the month of March where they will consider the county administrator's proposed budget and, um, and make, make changes and, um, and other decisions. And then final budget adoption will, will occur on April 6th or is scheduled to occur on April 6th. And as Supervisor Brisman mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, there are a number of resources available at loudon.gov forward slash budget. So here you can see both volumes of the uh, proposed budget, um, a much more detailed presentation on the budget, which is the county administrator's presentation. And there's, there's more detail both on uh, the economic situation, new expenditures and the capital improvement program in that, in that um, presentation, as well as um, the current year's adopted budget and other resources. Uh, so with that, that is my presentation. I do wanna, again, thank Supervisor Brisbane for in inviting us to come. And I think um, we would be happy to take any questions at this point. Thank you, Caleb. I really appreciate it. Um, and I, I said earlier that we're at the beginning of the budget process, but we're really at the beginning of the public facing part of the budget process and we should acknowledge that um you know the county staff has been working hard on this um and and pretty much does all year and updates us um you know on the regular when we're when we're deciding what the budget should be proposed um at and the rates and those sorts of things um so i really appreciate it we do have some questions that came in um before today and we've got a couple that have come in uh, through facebook so I will be um, asking those. Let's start uh, with um, the equalized tax rate. Um, in the presentation, uh, we talked about the equalized tax rate and what it means in terms of actual dollars for residents in Loudoun. Um, a, a couple things around that. Could you let us know what the actual um, average tax bill, what, ha what might happen to the actual average uh, residential tax bill at the, at the maybe two or three different rates that are being proposed? Uh, yes, thank you. So, you. so we talked a little bit in the presentation about the, the unique dynamic we're seeing this year where um, home values are appreciating significantly at a time where some commercial properties are declining. So, 
even at the overall equalized rate of a dollar, the average homeowner tax bill would increase by approximately $150 um, per year. Uh, at the proposed budget rate of a dollar and a half, the 1.005, that would be at approximately an $175 increase to the average homeowner's property tax bill. Uh, at the um, reduction option of, of 99 and a half cents, that would be an approximately $125 increase to the average homeowner's tax bill. Now, I will caveat, um, I always do when I talk about the, the tax bills, those are average tax bills when looking at all homes across the county. Every taxpayer's situation is unique depending on the value of their property and, and how much um, uh, valuations either increased over the past year or something else, how much their individual property is worth. So uh, I do want to acknowledge that every taxpayer's um, own situation is unique and, and may not align with what the average is. And then at the proposed tax rate, um, would we be fully funding the school budget? Yes, so the proposed the proposed tax rate of a dollar and a half um, uh, fully funds the school board's adopted request. So the school board's adopted request was for a $97 million increase in appropriations over the previous year for, for uh, local tax funding to the schools and the proposed budget fully funds that request. Okay, and then if we were to adopt a budget at the dollar equalized rate, what sorts of things would, would fall off of the proposed budget? Yes, so, so um, there would be two pieces to that. One would be the, the um, if, if the board were to adopt at the, the 99 and a half cent rate and follow the county administrator's scenario recommendation, uh, there would be a reduction to the uh, transfer to the schools, number one, um, uh, around a $2 million reduction in transfer to the schools. And then there would also be a reduction of some of the new uh, resources for departments. So that would that would be a, a wide range of things, everything from um, uh, staffing in the new staffing in the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, um, uh, a planning position in the Department of Planning and Zoning, um, and internal operations team in the Department of Family Services and erosion and sediment control program manager and building and development and, and other similar types of requests from departments. Um, so if we were to do a dollar or the 99 cent, we would, um, would we still be able to open the new facilities? Yes, at the 99 and a half cent scenario, um, the new facilities are opened, the board's priorities are accommodated, um, obviously, the base budget and employee pay, those are all accommodated as well. It would just be a reduction of some of the new resources that the uh, county departments have requested. Gotcha. Um, and at the uh, dollar and a half cent rate, we would be fully funding the schools and we would also be fully funding um, priority one and priority two resource requests from, from the county operating budget. Yes, and, and as, as you're mentioning, so um, every department in the budget process uh, submits their resource requests in a prioritized manner. So number one would be the most important of the department, number two would be the second most important and, important yeah. and so on. So um, in, this, in, in the proposed budget scenario at a dollar and a half, like you said, that would get through each department's top two priority uh, requests they've submitted into the budget process. Mm -hmm. And if, um, as we go through the budget process, supervisors tend to um, make motions to take out certain resource requests or maybe even add in certain resource requests, and that would impact the proposed budget or the tax rate um, when those resource requests exceed a certain dollar amount or the resource reduction um, goes below a certain dollar amount, correct? 
Yes. So during during the work session process, when the board is deliberating on on resource requests to either add or remove from the budget or adjustments to other line items in the budget, such as the local tax funding transfer to the public schools, um, each adjustment of approximately four point nine million dollars, which is a half the value of half a penny on the real property tax rate, would either move the property tax rate up or down. If that. Yeah. Um, so we had one question about the school's budget, and mm -hmm. that question was, are we taking into account um, a reduction in the student population that happened? I, I presume they're asking because of COVID, the reduction in the school population. And there was some discussion about that um, when we talked about the school budget. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yes, um, and, and I, I'll be up front too. I, I, we, we in the, as county staff are, are more in the business of transmitting the school's request and <laughs> working, working directly with the schools yeah. to have the schools be able to answer um, questions from, from the Board of Supervisors as part of the budget process. I will, as you noted, Supervisor Grissman, um, the Board of Supervisors and the school board um, met for a joint session on the fiscal year 22 budget earlier in February. The enrollment projections um, for for next fall's start of the academic year next fall were a topic of conversation, and uh, as part of the budget process, the schools will be providing additional information on their uh, in response to the board's questions on their enrollment methodology. Uh, this what I can say is the school board. Um, did make a, a, a reduction uh, from the superintendent's proposed budget. Um, a slight reduction uh, based on updated enrollment uh, uh, forecasting, but uh, I will be honest, I'm not enough of a subject matter expert beyond that to really speak knowledgeably about their enrollment forecasting and exactly how that um, how that interacts with their budget request. Well, it, uh, from the joint session, it's my recollection that they still predict um, a slight increase in enrollment um, even post COVID. So, um, to reduce for us to reduce our transfer based on what we think might be reduced enrollment actually make planning quite difficult uh, for the school system. Um, if this is helpful, uh, their actual enrollment in this current academic year, um, I, as of September this year was 81,500 students. Uh, the school board's adopted budget request is forecasting um, almost 86,000 uh, students uh, next next fall when when the school year starts. So, uh, to to be to be uh, clear about it, then the school is not reducing their enrollment expectations and have not budgeted for a reduction in enrollment expectations. Just from those two numbers, it would appear that they are not. Um, expecting a reduction is, is, is my assumption. <laughs> um, so, uh, that would, that would hopefully answer that question uh, that was asked on Facebook. Um, now, actually, let's stick with the schools for just a moment, um, because I want to make sure the public understands, um, what we do with the school budget, right? So. You mentioned basically we we transfer uh, funds to the school based on their request and then based on what we decide is the finalized equalized tax rate. And in the past, um, we have there has been a gap, so to speak. But the um, the county really is the county able to hold the schools accountable in any way as to how they spend that money once it's transferred. So that's a that's a good question. So as you mentioned, that the the board of supervisors is in charge of appropriating the school's budget, uh, so that the and and the largest component of that appropriation is the local tax funding transfer. Uh, once the funds are appropriated to the schools, it is at the discretion of uh, the school board as to how those funds are 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 spent. Um, the Board of Supervisors responsibility is to 
uh, is to appropriate the total amount. So, so as you mentioned, Supervisor Grisman, the board appropriates the total amount of the school's budget. The specific details of how that budget are spent are 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 up to the school board. Uh, Thank you for that clarification. Um, let me see the. Uh, what would oh well this kind of is along the same lines. One of the questions was what's the biggest line item in the county for expenditures and and uh, I think your dollar that you showed in your presentation shows that that's the schools. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one question that came through uh, two questions whether I would personally as a supervisor if I would support um, reductions in the in the but the proposed budget and if I would support the um, equalized tax rate. Um, I can say right now, we do have a number of budget work sessions that still will be happening. I think we've got what four, four to six of them coming up where we will literally be going line item over line item um, as to resource requests and those sorts of things. Right now, I can say that I support the proposed budget and the tax rate at a dollar and a half cent. Um, however, if there's a case, for example, that the courthouse um, expansion has been delayed and the sheriff's department doesn't need as many deputies for that. Then, of course, I would support a reduction in resource, you know, a request for reduction in resource requests, which would in turn, perhaps, if we get to that 4 million mark, would be able to lower the tax rate. Um, but that's something that happens kind of during our work sessions. And I am a supporter of the priority one and priority two requests from the county. Unless there's a way to reduce those, um, given that facilities aren't opening or staff tells us that they don't really need this, the, the resources that they are requesting. So I just wanted to answer that question that came through on Facebook. Um, let's see, we have another question that came through before today, and that is COVID has impacted every aspect of our lives for the past year. Um, I don't need to. Uh, enumerate those as we've all experienced them. How would you describe the health of Loudoun County's finance throughout the pandemic? And what is your economic forecast for FY22? Yeah, so that, that is a great question. Um, I, so. Uh, it's loaded the, too, the, so the, take your time. <laughs> yeah, the quick, the quick summary is the county's finances are, are, are very healthy. Um, the the actions that the board of supervisors took in response to the, the pandemic as part of the fiscal year 21 budget in freezing most of the new expenditures was was very prudent and set the county up um, in a strong position to to be able to deal with what a year ago was really in uh, more of an unknown situation as i mentioned since that time um, the county's uh, revenues across a number of sources have trended um, better than than our 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 most pessimistic uh, forecast scenarios of a year ago. Right now, we're projecting um, about twenty million dollars of uh, revenue loss um, during the current fiscal year versus what had been adopted in the budget. Uh, just to put that in perspective, uh, the county's general fund revenues are almost two billion dollars. So that. While a significant revenue loss is not um, not something that's uh, unmanageable for the county, and and the way we are managing that, as I mentioned earlier, is is there are 50 million dollars in currently frozen expenditures. So despite the revenue loss, the the county's current fiscal year budget is um, is set to end in a positive manner because of the proactive action that the board of supervisors took to address the economic situation. So I think that. Um, you know, obviously this last year has been difficult from a, so many different uh, aspects and it was difficult um, in some ways for pieces of the organization to have to freeze that, that new spending. But we have, we have done fairly well through the pandemic. Uh, the Board of Supervisors had a, a good plan to financially see uh, the county through the pandemic and, and that has really paid off. I, I will mention too that Loudoun County's economy, we are we are fortunate to be residents in, in a, a very um, in a county that has a very strong and robust economy. Um, the county's uh, local economy, uh, when you look at measures such as the unemployment rate as an example, has trended um, 
better than both the region, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and then and then nationally. So we, um, our economy generally performs um, is one of the highest performing local economies in the in the United States. So that has been a positive for the county as well. Um, in looking at our forecast for fiscal year 22, there are a number of revenue sources that 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 we have that are impacted by by COVID. We talked about the the impacts to the commercial property portfolio, and that impacts our real property revenue. Um, we are concerned about some of the revenues that are associated with uh, Dallas Airport, for example. So, as a small example, the county. Um, collects a daily vehicle rental tax on rental vehicles at Dallas Airport. Well, we significantly revised our forecast downwards for fiscal year 22 in looking at what anticipated travel trends will be. So there's a number of revenue sources like that that are impacted for fiscal year 22 and that in a quote unquote normal year would have been higher. Um, but the county's overall revenue situation for fiscal 2022 is very positive because of the strong growth in the data center industry. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Caleb. And and I do, um, you know, after going through a year like this, um, I think that Loudoun County can be proud that we that we've managed um, um, what what could have been a, a much um, more dire economic crisis. And we are lucky that our unemployment rate is much lower than um, than around the state and around around the nation. And also, um, we have. Our, our residents have had the ability to pay their taxes, and and we're we're very lucky in that regard as well. Um, I think you said at one of our meetings, Caleb, that over ninety percent of our residents paid their uh, property tax in full. Correct? Uh, yes, and I, I think when I provided that update, we were in the middle of the the tax collection at that time. What I what I will say is for both real property and personal property, um, the the um, collection rates uh, in this past year have not been materially different than previous non COVID years. Uh, so for both personal property and real property, um, that means we've collected uh, over ninety nine percent of the revenue, which is um, uh, on track with a normal year, and um, and and like you said, there has not been a, a large impact to collection rates. Though we certainly do recognize that um, individual residents may be making sacrifices to be able to pay their taxes versus other financial pressures that they have. So, gotcha. Yes, but still, it's it's. I think it's something that we that we are are very lucky and um, compared to some of the other jurisdictions, you know, across the nation that are that are uh, suffering a little a lot more than than Loudoun County is. I'll go to one more question about data centers um, that came in early, and then I think we have maybe one or two of the Facebook Live questions. Um, I think you touched on this a little bit, Caleb, but could you explain? Uh, why, while the data center revenue is very helpful right now, it's allowed us to keep our tax rates to, to residents fairly low. Can you explain why that is kind of a concern moving forward for the county? Yeah, so, and, and this is a, a unique conversation to have that we have um, uh, forecast such large revenue growth that that it's it's something that we think the Board of Supervisors needs to strategically address over the long term. Typically, um, you would think, oh, if we have strong revenue growth, that's very positive. And it is very positive. Don't, don't, don't get uh, wrong, but um, I'll, I'll try and run through this as, as quick as I can. So um, as of as of this past year, Loudoun County has about 20 million square feet of data center that has been constructed in the county. Uh, during um, the calendar year 2019, uh, that was about a 6 million square foot increase in developed data center land or in developed data center uh, buildings. Uh, once the buildings are constructed, uh, then they fill with computer equipment. So data centers um, contain server equipment mainly, uh, 
the best description of a data center I ever heard was the cloud is an is an actual location and that location is a data center. So um, they they are full of server equipment. That computer equipment is um, taxed as business tangible personal property, and um, computer equipment within a data center, depending on the size, could have a value of of, of hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so as the data center square footage is constructed, then that square footage is filled out with computer equipment. That computer equipment is taxed um, as business personal property, and then that revenue comes into the county. Over the next 10 years, the county is forecasting that approximately 20 million more square feet of data center will be constructed in the county for a total of, of about 40 million square feet. Uh, so what um, that would do given uh, current uh, trends in the value of that computer equipment that goes into data center buildings is that sometime in the middle part of uh, this decade, uh, revenue from computer equipment in data centers could be larger than revenue from real property tax, um, uh, real property taxes. Now, um, on one hand, uh, the revenue coming in from data centers, that's been very positive for, for county residents because it's allowed a number of uh, new expenditures uh, in the budget to occur that, that have, have not been on the backs of, of homeowners and, and real property taxpayers. Uh, on the other hand, real property tax is um, the county's largest and historically most stable form of revenue. Uh, we, do you think that the data center industry is, is very stable? They're a fantastic partner to the county. Um, but uh, data centers also refresh their computer equipment on, on a regular basis. So we're not anticipating any issues with that revenue in the near term. But over the long term, when you look out uh, 20, 30 years, technological changes or changes in, um, in how um, uh, data center companies locate their equipment or the county's competitive um, environment for the industry could change uh, the, the location of that equipment. And uh, if, if that data center revenue gets to a place where it is the largest revenue line item in the budget, in the future, the county, should the county become too reliant on the revenue, would have some difficult decisions to make uh, if, that, if that revenue uh, started contracting versus growing. But like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a, a, a long-term strategy uh, for the Board of Supervisors to consider, something the board um, will be looking at ahead of next year fiscal year's budget. Um, but for the, the near to medium term, there is a lot of uh, forecast growth in the data center industry, and that, and that um, comes along with a significant uh, forecasts in new revenue from data centers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. We, uh, right. So we, so basically the data centers that our residents see are almost kind of like shells and the, the, the equipment ostensibly could be, could be moved. Um, you know, it's not the, the data center industry says that they, you know, they're invested in Loudoun County and I, I tend to believe them and, uh, you know, it, it's it's not super easy to move equipment, but it is in fact equipment that gets refreshed and and could be moved, and then we lose that we lose that tax revenue. And also, I would think there would be a risk to um, being overly dependent on on a type of revenue uh, that is brought to us from you know uh, corporations, basically, rather than residents who who live here in the county and ostensibly you know care about care about the county and, and where and where they live um to maybe put it delicately or maybe not so delicately <laughs> um so uh let's see we had a couple other thank you for that caleb I, it's it's a little bit complicated and it's 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 um it's been an interesting exercise to try and and um see why being overly dependent on the data centers may not be may not be a good thing. Um, this is an interesting question. Um, and I don't know if you've done this analysis. This just came through on on Facebook, Caleb. So 
um, let me know if you've looked at something like this, but the question is, are we increasing taxpayers out of pocket cost at more than the rate of inflation at any of the proposed tax rates? I don't know if you've done that analysis or maybe you have a gut feel for it. Um, I, I am not, a, we, we do look at things like the consumer price index. I, we have not done a specific analysis of the consumer price index or inflation uh, versus um, uh, um, the proposed increase on for the average home in real property taxes. But if, if that's something you're interested in, Supervisor Brisbane, we certainly could take a look at that as a budget question to, to respond to as part of the process. That would be great. Actually, I am, I am kind of interested in that. Um, uh, I, I've done a little bit of analysis on that myself, just uh, looking at the minimum wage and how that hasn't um, matched inflation, but um, I haven't looked at it from our, from our county tax perspective. So it is an interesting question and I appreciate um, the uh, person who asked the question. It was Mary Ga Gaugan, maybe. Um, so we will get back to you on that one, Mary. Thank you. Um, yeah, we'll be happy to put together an answer for you on that. Yeah, that 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 would be kind of interesting. Um, let's see another question. Uh, this is a little bit long, but I'll read it to you. This uh, and and if it's something you can't, it's about the school budget. So if you can't answer it, um, we will get back to her. Uh, the school budget includes funding to begin collective bargaining. It also gives significant pay raises. So not sure this time. This is the time to unionize the employees. In addition, students will need a lot of remedial education to catch up from the losses this year. Money should be targeted um, to the classroom education and not unions. Um, I can take that a little bit, Caleb, and then if, if you or Alex have, have a comment. Um, I will say that the schools, I believe, actually have a plan to help students who may need remedial education. And I know that that conversation is ongoing. Uh, the, the term is not online LCPS. It is not LCPS Go. There's a term they're using for, for continuing some online schooling, especially through the summer, um, to help students that might uh, have fallen behind. So I would advise, um, looks like that was from Debbie Rose. I would advise Debbie to maybe look at the um, school plans for that. I've talked to Atusa about it a couple of times. Um, and the, the investigation into that is ongoing according to a recent conversation I had with uh, Vice Chair uh, Reeser. And then as far as um, uh, collective bargaining, uh, at least from the county perspective, I think Caleb, you and I might be able to, to speak to that. Uh, collective bargaining, uh, came through as a board priority and we are funding, at least from the county perspective, we are funding uh, the county's capability to do that. Although we haven't actually passed the um, ordinances or um, sort of legislation that would be needed to put that in place yet in the county, because we're looking at a couple different options as to how to accomplish it. Um, but that is that is in the budget at this time. Do you want to comment on that from the county perspective at all, Caleb? Uh, Sir Roger Brestman, I think your summary was um, was good. Uh, as you mentioned, in the within the proposed budget is um, is staffing for the county to be able to administer a collective bargaining environment. Uh, should the board make the determination to proceed with that initiative? Yep. Yeah, and I, and I actually fully support that um, the uh, collective bargaining and uh, I do support it as a collective collective bargaining, not the meet and confer version, but there will be a discussion um, uh, on the board about that and how how the county moves forward and it is it is funded in the um, proposed tax rate. So, let's see. Uh, this is another school question. I don't think that we can answer. Um, that's going to have to be a question to the schools. Uh, it's about school choice. So um, the only thing I will say ab about school choice is that I am not a supporter of um, sending uh, taxpayer funds for private schools. Uh, but that's that's all I'll say about that. And I won't ask you to say anything about that, Caleb. <laughs> um, 
So I think unless um, my staff has any other questions coming through, we can close out. Um, I had some uh, comment here. Uh, I think you already covered it though. The upcoming work sessions um, can be found online. We have a public hearing tomorrow at the county building um, at 9 a.m. I think it's scheduled to be from like 9 to noon. Um, and that can be watched online and I think you posted the phone number um, to uh, sign up to call in for public comment. And with that, Caleb and Alex, did you have any um, closing comments? Uh, Supervisor Brisbane, thank you for the invitation. Uh, just to reiterate what you said about the public hearing, it is tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, folks can call 703-777. 0204 to sign up in advance and then uh, the, the first budget work session will occur uh, starting on March 1st and then for the first three weeks of March and those can be watched at uh, www.loudon.gov forward slash webcast. Great. Mr. Espinoza, do you have any comments before we say goodbye? Uh, again, we just reiterate, thank you for the opportunity to participate. We hope it was informal and uh, we're glad to respond to any additional questions. Come okay, up. that is great. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, this will stay up on the Facebook page uh, so that folks can go back and learn um, about the budget process. So I really, truly appreciate your time this afternoon on a Friday. And um, you guys are always doing great work. I really appreciate county staff. Congratulations, Caleb, on your first Facebook Live event. <laughs> um, you guys have a great weekend. We will be signing off. Thanks again. Bye-bye.